Slightly unpopular opinion here, but nothing can damage a TV show quite as much as its audience's expectations. Especially in this post-lost era of theorising and speculating online about every minor detail with so much work put into predicting what's going to happen, most viewers like to think they're clued up on their favourite shows. It's pretty disappointing when we're all wrong, and that is, admittedly, most of the time. Worse still, some moments actually get hinted at and set up, only to then either take place off-screen or, well, never at all. Sometimes there's legit reasons for this, uh, boring, or sometimes the show just gets cancelled before they can happen. Either way, a guaranteed televisual piss boiler. My name is Adam Cleary and these are the 10 best TV moments everyone was waiting for that never happened. Hey, just quickly to pop in before the list actually starts, I just want to talk to you about That Film Theory. If you don't know what that is yet, it's a brand new channel that's going to be about video essays, cinematic experiences, a bit more relaxed approach. Hopefully we'll see you there, you can find the details down below. Number 10, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal. There are Hannibal stories, and then there is THE Hannibal story. Silence of the Lambs is the most well-known of the bunch because of the movie, but it's also the best of the novels, and something fanables were robbed of seeing on the TV series. It's not one singular moment, of course, but the idea of what Brian Fuller and Mads Mikkelsen could have crafted together out of Harris's book is a tantalising prospect. Fuller himself has even confirmed that this is what a fourth season would be based on should it ever happen, which it won't. It means we were robbed of seeing some of Hannibal's most iconic moments and terrifying acts, along with his meeting and torment of FBI agent Clarice Starling. That's Lecter, Graham and Starling all on screen together, now that would have been a feast. Number 9, Ted ending up with the mother, How I Met Your Mother. The show may have been called How I Met Your Mother, but the ending proved it was never really about that. With one final poorly handed twist, it instead became How I Get Back Together With Your Aunt Robin, which is admittedly not as catchy. Instead, and much to the ire of its fan base, Ted does meet the mother, but in a lightning flash of a montage, we're told they get married, have kids, and then she gets sick and dies. And that's it. There is hardly time to take any of that in before he's running off to present Robin with a blue French horn. Now yes, that is a lovely idea, but the execution of it is minging. How I Met Your Mother was already dragging things out by that point, but fans really wanted to see Tracy and Ted get together. It was, so we'd been told, the entire point of the show, and then it just wasn't. Number 8, Lois and Clark raising a new superhero, The New Adventures of Superman. Few TV cliffhangers have been as massive as the one that arrived at the end of Soup's fourth season. Lois and Clark, who'd finally got married and moved into a new home, arrived at their house to find a mysterious baby there. In my opinion, all babies are mysterious, but there you go. Who was that child? Where did they come from and who had left him there? How would Lois and Clark adjust to being parents and would their child take after his father in becoming a superhero? There were a number of questions and a number of moments ripe with potential, all of which were not only expected to be seen by fans, but intended to be shown in the next season. And the creators were planning on doing exactly that, with the baby aging rapidly into a teenager and developing powers. But the show was unexpectedly cancelled, meaning that the cliffhanger instead became its ultimate finale, which was weird. Number 7, Dexter gets his comeuppance, Dexter. Dexter was in a general decline, and I'm sorry, but it was from the fifth season onwards, because the show was never truly going to be able to top the rivalry between its titular character and the Trinity Killer. But it still had the chance for some redemption by having Dexter get his comeuppance. Opinions differed wildly on whether Dexter should actually die or simply end up in prison for his crimes, but he deserved at least one of the two to happen. And the former almost did, with people in-universe believing him to have died when his boat was wrecked. Except, as it turns out, he made it out alive and went on to live under an assumed identity working as a lumberjack. It's not exactly a happy ending for him, but he's been given a new chance of life, and the sight of him facing repercussions is lost amongst what feels like a giant f*** you. Number 6. Answers. Lost. Ending any series in a satisfying manner must be difficult, but to wrap Lost up in a way that could have given all fans all they wanted was probably impossible. Which is why I am HO, the series finale deserves a little bit more credit than it often gets. That said though, it still didn't give us any answers. Co-created by J.J. Abrams, yes, you remember him, the show was an outlet for his mystery box style storytelling. Over the years, it layered mystery on top of an enigma inside of a riddle and stopped it all with a giant cork that made a noise every 
every time he pulled it out. What was the true meaning and purpose of the numbers? What was the deal with Walt? The pregnancy issues, Libby, Anne, the rules, the lighthouse, the mother, any of it. There were so many mysteries and fans wanted so many answers that it's perhaps not surprising that the show didn't, or perhaps couldn't, deliver. Number five, Troy's return, Community. Donald Glover's Troy was a huge part of what made Community so magic in its first three seasons, but Glover sadly departed the show in season five due to Atlanta being picked up by FX, with the reason being he was captured by pirates, and that was the last fans would see of him. Of course, it didn't stop us from wanting to see Troy again. While Pierce had run his course, Troy still had a lot to offer the show, and despite how great the finale episode ended up being, there was still a sense of regret that we didn't get one last look at Troy. There was hope for a surprise cameo, but it sadly never materialized. Glover himself actually turning down a request to make a cameo in season six, saying it's important for things to end. Number four, Audrey Horn and Dale Cooper, Twin Peaks. Over two seasons of David Lynch's opus, Audrey Horn was the femme fatale to Dale Cooper's cherry pie eating, damn fine coffee drinking, purely good detective. And the chemistry between the pair was sizzling. We'll, um, we'll ignore the age gap. It was shelved in season two, however, for reasons that Cheryl Flynn believes were more to do with who Cal McLaughlin was dating in real life rather than anything narrative. Instead, we got Heather Graham being brought in as Cooper's new love interest, Annie. With Twin Peaks The Return, then, it was the chance to finally bring them together. But while Coop's grand return was an event in itself, Audrey's ultimate fate was more confounding. Trapped in a loveless marriage, the last we saw was her dance, and her path never again crossed with Coop's. Number three, Rick loses his hand, The Walking Dead. Rick Grimes losing his hand is one of the most iconic moments in the Walking Dead comics, and it comes pretty early in, happening in issue 28. With his right hand sawn off by the governor, Rick is forced to learn to shoot with his left, and it really helps shape him into the person he becomes later down the line. Understandably then, fans wanted to see such a huge moment come to life on screen. But while a number of classic moments made it, this one never did. Apparently the logistics and cost of having to remove Andrew Lincoln's hand for each episode would simply have been too too great. That's not to say they didn't tease fans with it though. There was the arrival of the governor, the moment Nagin tried to force Rick to cut off Carl's hand, and when he was trapped by the garbage people and injured his hand on a spike. A number of times it looked like they were finally going to go through with it, but Rick remained two-handed right up until the very end. Maybe in the movies then. Number two, Lady Stoneheart, Game of Thrones. George R. Er Martin delivered one of his most stunning plot twists to date at the end of A Storm of Swords, with the reveal that Catelyn Stark had been brought back to life, sort of. Although she cannot speak, Catelyn, now known as Lady Stoneheart, has been reanimated by the Brotherhood Without Banners and now seeks vengeance upon the Lannisters, Boltons, and Freys. When it came towards the end of season four then, there was a lot of expectation that Stoneheart would be turning up. Even Lena Headey appeared to be teasing it on Instagram. But then the season four finale came and went, and the credits rolled, and the show was over, and nope. But that's okay, because they're just saving her for season five, right? That way there'll be more to do, and they can have a better idea of how she would fit in, but still, nope. And now time has passed, and the showrunners have confirmed Stoneheart will never appear. Luckily, though, pretty soon we'll have the Winds of Winter book to reveal exactly what happens... Still no, really? Jeez. Number one... Buffy and Angel's Reunion, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. When Buffy died at the end of season five, no, you're crying, there was a question of how it would be addressed by Angel, and the answer was to be found in its season two finale. Angel and the rest of the team arrive back at the hotel to find Willow waiting for them, with Angel instantly knowing something has happened to Buffy. Given that, then surely, surely there would be something even bigger for Angel learning that she was alive again. Sadly, no. Buffy was on UPN at the time with Angel on the WB, and a deal couldn't be worked out for a proper crossover. So instead, there's a reference on both shows to the pair meeting up, but we never actually get to see it. Just imagine what that scene would have been like. Buffy and Angel reunited after both thought she was gone for good. The emotion, the romance, the power that would have been conveyed. It could have been another tearjerker on the level of I Will Remember You. Instead, it's just a couple of lines of dialogue, and no true reunion would happen until towards the very end, and that was, well, that was far too brief, wasn't it? Did you know that What Culture also does a board game? It's true, we do. And you can purchase it at shop.whatculture. Who knows, I might even sign a copy or two to devalue them a little bit.